I will bless the Most High at all times, and His praises shall continually be in my mouth. I want to say welcome back, everybody, to another Bible study, and I want to give a special shout out to my girl Erica Eight. Erica Eight, um, beautiful email. I'm gonna try to redo this video for the third time and keep rejecting me for some reason. But my title says Seven Women Going After One Man. Seven Women Going After One Man. Uh, nowadays, my sister, we see some of everything going on. You see a lot of women who used to be best friends are broken up now because she hit on her husband or she hit on her best friend's boyfriend or, you know, something crazy going on. And there's nothing new under the sun. And I want to deal with a scripture that's oftentimes overlooked um, because we see some things now and we think that it hasn't happened before. And you said from reading this scripture, it didn't make really a lot of sense to you. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you got to read Isaiah chapter 3 to understand Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. You got to look at who was these women, these daughters of Zion, women in Jerusalem. What was they doing? How was they acting? And what caused the Most High to send their judgment like he did? And that's why I want to take my title off of verse 1 in chapter 4. And it says, And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach we're going to deal with that may the Lord add a blessing to the readers hearers and most of all the doers of his holy word that's Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1 now this is powerful because in the church right now churches not all you have women doing what they want dressing so revealing saying things, doing things to get so much attention. I'm not talking about all women once again and not all churches. Women, I'm not down to you nor condemning you in this video. I love you, but I'm about to bring out some truth and me and I'm, I'm going to deal with us later on. Because these women were stuck on themselves. My sister, I'm giving you, I'm bringing you up to where we're going in this video because I'm just paraphrasing chapter 3, but when you get a you get a chance read Isaiah chapter 3 because in chapter 3 you see the judgment on Jerusalem and Judah and they had the wrong kind of leaders in position but when you get past those leaders they start dealing with the women of Jerusalem how they was dressing the wrong way how they was shaking and moving to get attention that walk that they was doing same thing we see nowadays in church. I see women clothes are getting tighter and tighter now. I see men clothes are getting tighter and tighter now. Some of us, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm just keeping it real, y'all. The way we supposed to be, now that's different when you don't know no better. But the way we supposed to be, we far from it. But these women, they had the finest of clothes jewelry, perfume. They had it going on. They had it going on. But the Lord made a point and he said he was going to strip them from everything they had. He even said their perfume, he going to take it away. They going to smell stinky. He even said the clothes they got, he's stripping them. He even said their beauty was going to turn into ugly scars. Read chapter 3. Now, when I think about this passage, you got a great debate about it because some people will say, well, this is dealing with the seven churches in Revelation. Or uh, the Lord is using these women to, to bring a better understanding on the churches. I can also agree with that teaching. But at the same time, I'm going a little bit deeper with that because of what the Most High really addressed. And then you look at the, the church, 
the the which is the bride of Christ. Some people can leave it there, but I'm looking at these women because it's something about the way he addressed these women, their attitude, their actions, what they had on, what they was doing. Now, I love I love studying like this, sister, because you bringing me up on my game to go back. I had to go back and look at some stuff. Um, I like to investigate. When I look at this scripture, this is what stuck out to me. These women said we will eat our own bread and we're going to wear our own apparel. But look at this. They said only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach, our childishness, our, our shamefulness. Now, that don't sound all that positive to me. Now, check this out, men. This go to show us also how we are always outnumbered, especially in church now. This prophecy was speaking of a time, Brother K. Ray, when women would outnumber men seven to one. Now, my sister, Erica, this is what I want to tell you in this video. When you look at this being outnumbered, the reason why when you read chapter 3, you will see that something started happening with the men. And I'm going to let you answer that. So when there is a shortage in men, that means more women, when they see any ounce of a single man, they're going to jump on them. It's just like nowadays, folks, some folk don't care. They don't care whether you married or not. So when you look at these daughters of Zion, if they saw one single man out there, seven women was going to run after that man. He was going to run after them, try to get him. But kick, then let's keep this in, in your mind, what these women was doing, how they was acting, how they was dressing. Chapter 3 goes into details real good about what they had on, how they was dressing, dressing, I mean, and they, they jewelry, they fine linen, everything they had, the Lord stripped them clean. This is why Paul said in the New Testament, don't let your outer appearance, what you got on and all this, spending all this time trying to look so good on the outside that your inside is so messed up. Your outside appearance done became your main focus. Nothing wrong with looking good. Fix yourself up, look good. But once you focus on just looking good, I'm going to go in here to attract somebody, have them looking at me. You went to church for all the wrong reasons. You do it. You sin it. You are. That's why Paul said that. To answer your other question. Now, in this verse, we see these type of women they was motivated. But their only motivation was for marrying that man to use him. Now to those that want to just say this, just apply to just the church. You know, I, I heard preachers debating about this, saying this scriptures is talking about arrogant churches. Or churches like in Revelation, lukewarm church, anything go on. But the Bible is really addressing these women also. So I can look at it once again both ways. But these arrogant women, once again, they was only trying to get that man to use him. They only wanted to be called by the man's name only so they can take away their reproach, their shameless. Now, if you catch this, they still wanted to do what they wanted to do. They wanted to have their way on a highway. Now catch this. They wanted to provide their own things. That's why they say we're going to eat our own bread. I'm trying to take my time with this. That's why they was talking like they was talking. They only want to be called by the man's name. Now to the ones that believe it on the other side is the church. We can see this. The church is the bride of Christ. So you can also say, we can teach it like this. These women wanted to be called Christians, but they didn't want to be a Christian. Uh-oh, ouch. 
You got people in the church right now, they want to be a Christian, the title I mean, but they don't want to be a Christian. They don't want to suffer as a Christian. They don't want to be persecuted as a Christian. But they want the title. Y'all, we catching this. So these arrogant women. Now check this out. They want to clothe themselves in their own apparel. Instead of being clothed in righteousness of Christ. See, let me put a pen right there and, and, and stop right there for a minute because this is why I tell people all the time, all this fighting and fussing about a woman can't wear pants in church, makeup, just like people get on me for having this on and you see me in videos with hats on, hats off, just according to how I feel, people put more attention on your outer appearance, but they never look at your heart. This, what I got on my head, don't have nothing to do with this. Whether I got a hat on or a hat off, am I saying something? Y'all see what I'm saying? All this stuff causes confusion and division. People are divided up because of stuff that has nothing to do with salvation at all. So when I look at these women, now you understand why I want to use this title. Seven women going after one man. Now, I know from being single and being a minister of music, we fight this stuff off all the time. We do. And it's, it's, it's sad. Because it's, it's so sad now it's to a point where a, a woman don't have... I ain't talking about all of y'all women. I love you once again. But so, so many women... Don't have no respect for the most high. Nor any respect for you being married or not married. And I'm talking about in the church. We already know what's going on in the world. And I always used to say that growing up. For every man, it's self-made women. And some of these men out here, they love having more than one woman. But you can look at Solomon and see what more than one woman can do for you. In the, in the end. Look at, look at what it did. Turned his heart from the most high. Seven women going after that one man. The, the, the Bible was speaking of what we living in right now. When you cut on the television, you cut on some of these shows, you see women fighting over that man. And what's even sad on top of all this, some of these men ain't got nothing going on for themselves. And those are the main ones a lot of these women are going after. Am I a hater? No, I'm a congratulator. I'm just speaking what's real. So many women, except they values, they, they priorities and everything is so messed up. They, they standard is so on the low side that they will settle knowing that that man is still with his wife. I hope I've said something, y'all, because I like to always go back to scriptures like this because they they rarely are taught about, even though that's Old Testament, but it's also New. New Testament, New Covenant. I like to say Old Covenant, New Covenant. That's New Covenant right there. We're living in that right now. You, you, you can say that's the, the daughters of Zion in Jerusalem at that time. But we can also fast forward nowadays and say, that's a lot of women right now. It's a lot of men. We got sugar daddies. We got sugar mamas. We got, sad thing is now we got women with women, men with men. We all jacked up out there. That's why the children are growing up so confused. So with that being said, y'all, uh, I love you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful blessed day. Check out the other video I'm about to post called Spiritual Horse. Don't get mad at the title and cut it off. Check out what I'm talking about. And make sure you don't fall in that category. Peace.